All right, everybody, let's get going. So, uh, so welcome back. Uh, I, I uh, normally like, hang out a little bit after class. I have to really skedaddle um, before class ends because I have to go catch a, an airplane. So, um, so sorry about that, but I gotta, I gotta go quick. So, um, uh, we're gonna go through some logistics stuff, talk about the, the wrap up, and and all that good stuff. First thing to say is I hope everybody's doing okay. I hope everybody is, I know there's craziness and everything, but I hope at least everybody's stable now and, and, and things are making a little bit more sense. I apologize for the, the craziness of the last several weeks, um, but there, you know, insanity comes knocking at our door sometimes, so um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, the good news is, of all your classes, this is the easiest one to make up, right? We don't have a thousand million tests here. We don't have this and that. It's really you guys just continuing to make progress on your, uh, towards your capstone. So uh, by way of explanation, which I've told on my other sections, so just so everybody hears the same thing, um, the, uh, the, the university administration felt that they didn't have a choice but to shutter campus for the past two weeks. So that has to do with, with equitability and people that were eligible for financial aid and accreditation, all this and that. The original plan was to make accommodations for you guys, right? So if people are messed up or out of their house or this or that, <coughs> that it was all good, we were gonna you know, uh, uh, take some action to make sure that you guys weren't penalized. And turns out that's not, that's not allowed. So, um, I mean, accommodating you guys is allowed, but, but um, uh, uh, essentially we have to shut everything down. We can't let some of you guys do stuff and others of you not do it and this and that. And so, so the only way to do that was to just boom, boom, shutter everything. And so when they first communicated this to us, just saying that campus was gonna be closed, that was like all good. I'm gonna send these. I'm gonna give these guys some uh, lectures and you know, some online posting and stuff. And, do this. and then, then they clarified stuff uh, by saying no, like not, you know, no, 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 no. You guys can't really do or whatever. So, so I encourage you guys to keep working on your capstone, but I, that's all I could do, right? So, so I'm sorry for that, but it's the hand we were dealt. Okay. Done, boom, moving on, moving on. Um, so I wanna go over what we're gonna do the next couple weeks, run through this stuff, and I'm gonna email this stuff to you guys so you guys will have this also, have these things we discuss also. Um, but um, basically we're, we're just orienting to focus on our last assignment, which is our uh, introduction, right? The start of our capstone thesis, right? Um, and this will be due when our quote unquote final time would have been. And so in this case, I've made it as late as possible. This is Friday of finals week. So you have the max amount of time, which is great for you. It sucks for me because I have to read everything in a much shorter amount of time. But, um, but that's what's going on, okay? So I wanna talk about what we're gonna do and we're gonna go through this and then, um, and then I know you guys need ad codes for, for next semester and we'll do that after. Okay, so, so just relax. So we'll take care of that. But I first wanna go over what, what we need to do. Cool? Okay. So, um, uh, you, you guys got it, you guys, and I'm oh, sorry, and I have this, so you guys can, I mean, I'm gonna email this to you too, but if you guys want copies, there's, there's copies of these if you guys wanna pass them around. Okay. So you guys are submitting an introduction. This introduction is a little teeny bit different than in past years how we do this. In past years, I have you guys put keywords, I have you guys do an abstract, et cetera. No, we're just doing the, the, the core nut of the introduction. What does that mean? That means a title page, a separate title page, is a title of your project and your name, or if you're in a group, all of your group members' names. If you are in a group, I'd also like a comment by each person's name. What, which sections were you primarily responsible for? Or what, what, what components of this were you primarily responsible for in your team, okay? Uh, and then the introduction itself. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second, but the introduction itself. And then whatever the literature cited or reference section is for the, 
for the literature that you cite in your introduction. That's what I'm talking about is due. You guys will, on that, on that Friday, a couple Fridays from now, you guys will submit an electronic version of this to a Turnit Insight that I'll set up for you guys. That'll just check for plagiarism and all that kind of silly stuff we have to do. But the main thing you're gonna do is then you're gonna turn in a printed version to me. So you're gonna give me a physical copy, upload an electronic one. The physical one is the one I'm gonna look at and read and, and give you suggestions on and feedback, et cetera. Okay? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep going through just the sort of what's due and then we'll cycle, circle back and talk a little bit more about, in detail about the introduction, okay? Okay, so, um, the, uh, so uh, the other thing that I want from you guys is I want, um, again, since I've been gone and we're, we've been gone and it's been hard to keep touch with folks, um, I want to know what your winter break plans are, right? So I know we, we, had, we had some, we're working on various things and, and this and that, but, but sometimes things evolve, sometimes your project changes. So I want to hear now that we're at the end of the semester, what are your plans for winter break? What's your, what are your data collection plans? How's that, how's that going to work, et cetera? Um, and uh, excuse me, so both for your introduction and for winter, your winter break plans, all these things, um, uh, you can submit one document if you're in a group. So if I'm by myself, I'm going to submit obviously my document. But if I'm in a group, there's one introduction for all of you guys, right? You're not going to need me four copies of your introduction. And the same thing for your winter break plans, you're not going to need me four copies of your winter break plans. You guys should be coordinated and you guys should turn in a unified document, right? With everybody's name on it. Okay. Um, hopefully you guys have all been blogging. I know not everybody has, and I know people have, some people have been displaced and things, but, but um, hopefully you've been blogging. If you haven't, you need to get back to at least once a week a, a blog post. Um, the one thing I'm adding though here is I'd like everybody by finals week, so this week or next week, I want you to do, and so we've talked about a typical blog entry is a multimedia item and a paragraph or so thing, right? I'd like you guys to do more, and you're welcome to always do more than that, but you know, at least a, you know, a paragraph is, is fine for a lot of what we're talking about, right? Little updates. Better if it's two or three, but this particular blog post, um, I would like to be more detailed. So more like on the order of four or five paragraphs kind of thing, so a bit meatier. And I'd like specifically for you guys to reflect on on how progress has gone, particularly over the last month or so with all this craziness, right? And this is just so I can get a sense of what's going on with you guys. So I, if you said everything sucks, I've made no progress, I'm, I'm not gonna pen penalize you. I, I, I just wanna get a sense of stuff. So I want you guys to take a few minutes and do this seriously. Don't bang this out in 30 seconds. But you know, spend some time over dinner, spend some time when you're jogging or whatever and kind of think, so what, how has this gone? How, you know, what is, is it all just crazy? Has it been going pretty well? Am I pretty happy? Am I, am I concerned? Whatever. And then, and then please do a, a you know, reflective piece just, just sort of tells me um, how stuff has gone so far. Okay? That can count as that particular weekly, that week's blog entry, or it can be an addition. It's, it's your guys' choice. Uh, and then one last thing is I'd like to me, so certainly for you guys that I'm your major uh, mentor, your, your intellectual contributor, your, your, your mentor, if that's the case, definitely want to have a meeting with you guys either this week or next week. It's obviously for you guys, it's getting a little late since I'm going to be at the funeral tomorrow. Um, but you know, we can do it next week. But by the end of next week, I want to have met with anybody that I'm advising. I would love to meet with everybody by the end of next week but it's only mandatory for folks that, that I'm your major, major helper, right? So I wanna just touch base and make sure I'm, I'm giving you guys the feedback you need, et cetera, now that we've all been apart from each other. But of course, everybody is welcome to, uh, to do that. Uh, so after we do things, if you guys wanna come up and, and pick a time that's cool, you can also use my Calendly uh, uh, app. Um, so, so cool. Um, Uh, we'll, we'll come back to overview of introduction. Okay, so then, so what's going on for next week? Okay, so what are we doing next week? So next week, and the other thing to say is the things we would have done, we would have spent some more time on resumes and some things like, it's all good, we're just gonna move those things to next semester, so it's okay. So those things we would have covered, we'll still cover, just, just 
in a few months, in a month or two, okay? So, so those things you get, we'll still talk about business cards and all that kind of stuff. All right, um, uh, but what's due next week? So next week, so you guys, between now and next week, you will write your introduction. You will bring a complete draft of your introduction to class next week. I thought you said it was doing two weeks. Yes, so what? You're gonna bring your whole introduction next week. As we've talked about, no, very few of us are good writers. We're struggling to be good rewriters, right? If we don't have this first, first draft, real draft, not like, I'm gonna talk about this thing in three bullet points, right? But actual real, real crafted sentences and paragraphs want that for next week so we can get some feedback to you guys and then you can be tweaking that working on that etc uh making it really kick butt for our you know for the for the final submission time so would that be on Wednesday or on no this is for next week's class or, sorry, I, I so, so 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 this is for next week's uh, so, this, so for you guys, this is a week. So this should be done a week from today. Cool. Okay. Um, and so, what I want you guys, I want you guys to. Um, so for next week, I want you to bring four. So for next week, I want you guys to bring four printed copies of this per group. That doesn't mean if there's four groups, uh, four people in your group, that's not, doesn't mean bring 16 copies, just four per group. And we're gonna do this by groups, okay? So you guys are gonna get peer feedback. So you're gonna bring your copies, we're gonna put you guys into groups of three-ish people or three-ish groups, and you guys are gonna read each other's stuff and give each other feedback, okay? So you gotta bring a printed version <laughs> of a complete introduction. Not the first page or the first five pages or something like that, but the a complete four copies. Also next week, I want you to bring a printed version of that, of your winter break plan so I can at least skim it while you're in here and I give you some quick feedback while you're doing the peer review, I'm gonna be looking at those. So again, um, and again, the, the winter break plan, it can just be one print up, one, one piece of paper per group is okay, just have everybody's name on it. The other thing we'll, we'll, we'll spend at least a couple minutes next week talking about is logistics for spring break. So some of you guys might need to get into the lab. Some of you guys might need equipment. We'll talk about that next week. And, uh, and by the end of next week, again, folks that, that are my folks, I wanna, I wanna meet with you and, and give you feedback. Uh, as a reminder, when, you're, when this is done, the final, final version, so this is finals week now, this will be due Friday at 1 p.m. in this room. Okay? So, um, that means the electronic version is, will be, have, have been uploaded to the Turn and Insight, and that this means that you will have brought and given me your printed uh, version. If you guys are gonna be totally done early, and you're gonna go skiing with your family for the break and whatever, and you wanna leave on Thursday, that's fine. Your whole group, though, needs to drop this off as a group, right? In case there's any problem, right? So you get, as a group, you're gonna drop it off. And so if you want to meet sometime before, before the 14th on finals week, that's all good. You just need to come up and we need to schedule that time. Okay, we can meet my office or something. Cool? cool. So you can turn in earlier, but your whole group needs to come and we need to, we need to agree on what that time is ahead of time. Okay. Um, great, and that's it. That's it for the semester. Okay. So uh, before I start taking questions, let me just go back and cycle over what we're what we want to talk about in terms of our introduction, what we mean by our introduction. Uh, first, there's some simple logistic things. So normally for these types of drafts, you guys would make them double spaced, so it's easy for folks to provide comments, but there's a lot of paper, slaughtering a lot of trees. So one and a half uh, line spacing is what I'd like to see. So it's not single space, so it gives me some space to write, but it's not, save a few pages, right? All the margins should be one inch margins. 
all the body of the text should be 12 point times New Roman. It's up to you. You guys can use as much creativity as you want for your, your section headers or your title page and stuff. But the bulk of the text, the body of the text, should be 12 point times. Um, uh, more than welcome to print it double-sided. I know not everybody has a printer at home that can do double-sided. You don't have to, but if you want to do it double-sided, that's, that's legit. That's cool. Um, yeah, remember to include a separate title page. And Amanda, I'm going to be emailing this. To you. you can take a picture, but I'm going to email this to you guys too, so you have that. Um, sorry, uh, so, so yeah, so title page and everybody's name and what sections they were primarily responsible for. Uh, other common things people have done in the past is they space on doing their reference section. Do not space on your literature cited. Do not space on your references section. One. Two, um, this is maybe one of the casualties of the last several weeks of us not being able to get together, but um, you guys should now have, if, if you're by yourself, you're all good. If you're in a group, you guys should have a unified bibliography. Okay? So I'm being very serious and I'm speaking from years and years and years of experience. Don't do bullshit things and try to manually type in these references. Okay? I just said, do not manually type in these references. I understand that not everybody has used the bibliographic software of your choice as, as frequently as I would have liked this semester. I guarantee what some of you guys are thinking is, oh, fuck it, I'm only going to type it in. You will screw yourself up. You will waste days of your time. This is from years of experience. It's much, much better if you've not practiced this yet to spend an hour or two tonight playing with it, figuring out how to do it, it's so simple. Once you get the references in your database, you just insert, boop, boom. It's going to make, it's going to create the reference section for you, right? It might seem like it's going to take you some time to learn it, but it's going to save you days and days, especially as we're getting close to the end and you're freaking out and you're changing this paragraph and you're editing that and you forgot to edit that. It, it, that's just silly, right? Get in these good habits now. Save yourself some stress. Use, and, and again, and as we've done it so far, you guys might probably have your, your own individual things, but now as your group, you guys got to decide who's going to be the master keeper of the references, right? And, 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 and who's going to take that on, but, but um, have that conversation with your group. Cool? Um, and then, uh, yeah, and so while, while technically speaking, you're not required to have section headings, I strongly encourage you guys to have section headings. That helps with organization, that helps with flow, that helps especially if you guys are in groups, but just singularly anything, it really, really helps. Now, we've talked about the standard format of technical papers, of scientific papers, introduction, methods, results, right? All that kind of stuff. And we mentioned that that was hypertext before we had hypertext. So you and I can go to Joe Blow's paper, boom, jump up and back and forth and just flip, flip, flip and find the results really quickly, right? That's really cool. This section here that I'm talking about, subsections, headings, there's no magical formula for that. that that's going to be more paper by paper, topic by topic approach. But, but I would, and we haven't done much of that this semester, but, but I would encourage you guys to play around with that. Is this, is this a smart way to do it? Maybe I should have a section of this. Maybe I should have a section of that. Uh, and don't forget your references, because somebody's going to forget the references. So don't forget your references. If I haven't said that again, if I have to say that again, I would say, to, don't forget your references. All right, okay, good. And, and, and just to be clear, this is the references for your introduction. You might have other references that you're going to use in your methods or something else. That's cool. Those, those should not be in this. This is just the reference section just for the, inter, just, for this, just for the citations you actively put in. This isn't your whole list of all the 200 papers you found. Is that a question? No, okay. All right, so let's talk a little bit again. Um, we're just going to touch base and, and, and realign ourselves as to what we're talking about when we say introduction, okay, conceptually. So our introduction is the thing that's going to set the stage for us. Our introduction is going to go, is going to be an upside down triangle. It's going to be an upside down pyramid, okay? 
So we're starting very broad, and we're going to be going bloop, 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 and ending up essentially with what the focus of our study is, what those core hypotheses we, we will test are. Also recall that everything like this you guys are writing for me, you're writing from the perspective of May 1. So I understand that, this, that your introduction may well evolve next semester because you're going to change a component of your study and you've got to have a section about this or, or I, I can leave that section out and I get that. But it so it should be written as, um, you know, I studied, we found, right? Not I hope to look at, you know, no, no. So we're going to start up and set up the problem. So uh, there's you know close to eight billion people on planet Earth right now, and um, more and more uh, uh, people across the planet are interested in um, uh, meat-intensive diets, and these meat-intensive diets are causing you know brrr, and you have some, something like that drill into whatever the topic is. Then I'm going to spend some time talking about the topic, right? So again, this is, this is where I, you are going to show me your scholarship. I understand what the context is. I understand what the history of this, of this a challenge or topic or whatever is. I also understand um, what the current state of information is about this and the current state of understanding of this, of this issue, right? And therefore, that leads to this great challenge. I'm not sure how this is going to, or, or, or so, so we're, we're unclear of the best way to, to produce more protein for people that's relatively sustainable and relatively uh, minimally impactful on the planet. But one approach is this, another approach is that, another approach is that, another approach is that, and then describing those. And then I therefore sought, or we therefore set out to test which of these four uh, for components was going to have the lowest water usage per kilo of protein that, that is generated, right? Specifically, I'm testing the hypotheses that, you know, boom, 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 boom. Cool? So we're going very broad down into narrow. One of the most common mistakes right now, because you guys are, are really just starting to get into the flow of your, of your study, Important to remember, this is not your methods. This is not what you are doing. This is the challenge in what you're trying to address. Perhaps the most challenging one to figure out of this, of the, of the suite of things, are, are folks that are working on a specific site. Let's say, oh, I don't know, randomly, Santa Rosa Island. Where do I introduce Santa Rosa Island? Do I introduce Santa Rosa Island in the methods section, which is, you know, some, sometimes that's legit, or in the introduction section, sometimes that's legit. Generally speaking, probably you want to introduce it in the introduction, right? When we're, as that is relevant to your question. When I'm doing my transect on a grassland and my other transect in the Torrey Pines, and my other transect down the sandy beach and all this and that, those details of, 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 of the specifics of how that lays into how I put my transect tapes out and this and that, that's the method section. But sort of the general introduction, that's the introduction. The, the general introduction, that's the introduction. Wow, that's really excellent. Um, but I'd like to point out another thing for you guys to remember, which is the audience that is reading this. So this is written at the level of, of other, this is a professional paper, this is a technical piece of writing, okay? But it should be written for other environmental professionals, okay? So if I say habitat fragmentation, I don't need to define habitat fragmentation. You can e expect your audience for this paper to understand what habitat fragmentation means. However, the person reading this isn't necessarily going to be an expert in your subdiscipline. Okay? Meaning, so you know, generic stuff like biodiversity and, and, and habitat fragmentation, you know, things like that, like the, you can just say those. Don't have to worry about defining them. But if it's something that's more specific, a term, zeta diversity. Oh shit. Oh, better define that, right? Because maybe not everybody knows what that means. Or um, 
uh, ROV, I would define it as remotely operated vehicle, right? Because maybe not everybody knows, you know what I'm saying? So, so assume a, a general expert knowledge, but not somebody that's a specific expert in your area when it comes to defining things. And should I have a section on that? Should I have a line to say, I did this out on Santa Rosa Island? No, because maybe, maybe this professional doesn't know about Santa Rosa Island. So maybe I want to put a paragraph in there just as general, give them the general setting where it is, uh, 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 a little like brief two, three sentences about the management history as, as pertains to this, this project, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Later on, next semester, don't worry about this now, but next semester when we do our poster, the poster is a bit more general public oriented. So the poster is, we, is not exactly the same thing as this thesis, but the written thesis is expert uh, environmental, ex environmental professional um, audience. Cool. All right. Uh, so I was going to uh, click through a couple of old examples of old drafts from people. i just show you some examples. But before I do that, um, now that we've kind of run through the next couple weeks and, and did a quick intro to our introduction. I keep saying intro. What the hell? Um, general questions you guys have or, or questions about this stuff. Anything you guys wondering about? How long should it be? So then here's what the a-hole professor says, it's as long as it needs to be. Don't you hate that when they say that? So uh, what does that mean? Um, it truly means I'm not going to page count. However, some of you will chunder when I say that. So this represents a semester of your scholarship. So turning in a two-page introduction, you will fail. And that's not because I'm counting pages. That's because one and a half, page, uh, one and a half line spacing, two pages, that's bullshit, right? Don't insult me. Don't insult yourself, right? So a more typical introduction, you know, we're talking 15, 20 pages, something like that, 30 pages maybe. It's going to depend on tables and things and stuff. Certainly, some of you guys are in large groups. Certainly a large group with access to way more time than other people have had, five times the amount of effort to find references and, and understand the, the details and stuff, they sure as hell better not give me a two-page introduction, right? But I'm not counting pages. But something on that order of magnitude, you know, tens of pages kind of, kind of thing. Totally. You guys can put a map in there. You can put an, an illustrative picture. You guys can put in a, 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 a table. Absolutely. Whatever you guys, whatever makes sense for you to make your argument is legit. Second question. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Just recall, if it is a picture or something from somebody else's paper, that's cool. Just make sure you reference that, that thing just like you would a, an in-text citation. Other, other uh, uh, general generic questions or over overview questions? Yes, yes. Yeah, so, so the format should be ecology. Uh, yeah, e eco ecological applications, ecology. Yeah, yeah. Joe. I already have like big bibliography software, but people who don't. Is there a way of getting it free, or is that? Yes, yeah, so we talked about that before. So, so, um, so everybody here has free access to EndNote Web, which is through the library. Um, and as and a quick summary of that is uh, I use EndNote. Most of the people that I know, Dr. Gillespie, other people, that, other scientists, we all use EndNote. Not that you have to do that, but that's what we t typically use. But we use the standalone version. So we don't use the web-based version. We use the, the on the computer version. Um, uh, Again, you guys can get that with a student discount for something, I forget what it is, $114, $109. And that's a perpetual license. That's not $109 every year. That's, that'll work for whatever, right, forever. Um, whereas if you bought the full version of that program, that's like 400, 500 bucks or something if you weren't a student. So it's a good deal. And again, I'm not telling you you have to do that. I'm just saying that's what most of my colleagues use that I know. Um, 
there's there's Zotero, there's um, there, there's the free there's other free ones that are out there. All of these programs, whether it's EndNote Web or EndNote Desktop, whether it's Zotero, whether whatever, um, Pub Manager, whatever, they all will interact. You just you just export them in either the RAS format or whatever it is, and so so they will all talk to each other. They will all talk to each other. But that's the question you guys have to have amongst your group is is Joe, are you going to be the king of it? Is you know who's going to who's going to be the one that's going to be you know from here on out maintaining the the masterpiece? If you do something like EndNote Web, um, most of these programs are designed to collaborate with with you know to write with somebody in Australia or whatever. So they're they're all a little teeny bit different, but they they all have a mechanism to to share stuff online and to have a, a shared uh, library that you can all tap into. It, it's just going to vary if you're on the desktop version or some other version. 